You're watching CNET, the digital domain. Else, Millennium and Star Trek Voyager had been pulled off the web. This is not a copyright issue. What this is about is control. Is that a problem? We'll tell you who's pulling the plug and why. And how big corporations and celebrities deal with the tremendous amount of information and misinformation about them on the web. Tired of spaceships and laser beams? Load up your six-shooter and ride into the wild, wild west with the hot new game, Outlaws. Plus, what to do when you run out of hard disk space and some hardware you might want to check out before you spend your hard-earned bucks on a digital camera. And as usual, all the latest news from the world of computers and fans of the silver and small screen will want to stick around for our weekly Best of the Web, right now on CNET Central. From the number one on-air and online information source for the digital age, this is CNET Central. Hi, I'm Richard Hart. And I'm Gina St. John. Welcome to CNET Central. The mantra of the World Wide Web for the past year has been content, content, content. Everyone has become a publisher, but now we find the web catching its breath. Some big corporations and established media institutions are beginning to pay attention to what is being published about them. And often, they don't like what they see. We'll talk a little later in the show about some of the spin doctors who are trying to control what is said about these corporations online. But first, I want you to imagine this. You're a fan of a TV show and decide to use the power and ease of publishing publishing on the web to create a shrine for your favorite show, only to find out that may no longer be as easy as it sounds. Many webmasters are finding that their sites might not be protected under free speech laws. In fact, your favorite fan site might not be there tomorrow. Is the party over for laissez-faire publishing on the web? Recently, some major companies such as Fox and Paramount raised a few eyebrows in Washington. Here's what they did. They bombarded the webmasters of some unofficial fan sites with cease and desist email messages. Their claim? Copyright infringement. Well, do they have the right to shut down these sites? And are they only doing themselves a disservice by snubbing their fan base? Pamela Samuelson, a professor of law and information systems at UC Berkeley states, Most people think that if I'm not trying to commercially exploit this material and I'm not trying to sell things, then I shouldn't have to worry about it. This is obviously fair use. Gil Treviso ran a few X-Files news groups and was webmaster of a now defunct site dedicated to the Fox television program Millennium. He believed that watching the chaos which he created would be the thrill. Fox uh, and 1013 uh, are trying to frame this issue as a copyright issue. And certainly that's a concern that has to be addressed. But the fact of the matter is, from everything I've learned and from everyone I've talked to, uh, both outside and inside the show, this is not a copyright issue. And it's not really about copyright at all. What this is about is control. Is that a problem? When Gill's site was shut down two days before the premiere of Millennium by David Oakes, Fox's attorney, he turned to his fellow X-Files fans for support. And what he got was much more than he anticipated. Whole protest movements were started over that weekend. People started getting together ideas of how they'd go about it. They'd contact the sponsors and voice their disapproval to them. They'd flood uh, Fox with negative email about this whole policy. Gill's site was not saved. However, the protests have grown in strength and are not limited to just Fox broadcasting. Star Trek fans are voicing their anger against what they're calling the assimilation or the elimination of graphically enhanced fan sites. Some people's skills are all visual. And if that's taken away from them, then um, it's pulling something away from the human spirit. That censorship on such an open community um, shouldn't be allowed. Jeff Rind received a form letter in the mail from Viacom claiming copyright infringement. He has complied with some of the requests. However, he wants to know what Viacom specifically wants removed from his site, something which Viacom has yet to provide. Since I sent them my response to their letter, I have not heard a word from them. Um, not a phone call, not an email, not a letter. Uh, 
I think that they've decided that perhaps this was the wrong way to go. Paramount has posted a letter on the official MSN Star Trek site stating the guidelines that fans must follow when they build these unofficial web pages. However, when we tried to talk to them about it in person, they shut us down. For now, the war will continue to rage over the freedom of the Internet. Will corporate America win out? It has to remain democratic. It has to remain free. And through that, solving our problems, building a better world, and realizing everything that we hope for with this new medium. We have more information and a great feature article about the battles brewing over fan base sites. Head on over to our digital home, CNET.com, and be sure to check out our links to some of the more controversial fan base sites. You know, it's been amazing because in the last two years, you could put up a website about anyone or anything. And now some of those companies who are upset are using fire to fight fire. Mm -hmm. The power of publishing and the ease of use inherent in the World Wide Web is causing a stir in another corner of the world, information and misinformation. It's finding its way online for everyone to see and a lot of celebrities and corporations are less than thrilled about what's being said about them on the web. Their only defense? Internet spin doctors. These celebrities have all seen their share of gossip and rumors online. You know there was a time when you only had to fight bad press in magazines and on television but now scandalous websites can pop up in a matter of hours for all the world to see. So here's the question. Should celebrities, corporations, and even you fight this new form of gossip? I think it's worth responding to negative press if it's going to potentially hurt someone's career, if they're not going to get jobs because of it. Anything else I generally is not worth responding to. Elizabeth Much of the PR firm Much & House represents celebrities such as Alicia Silverstone and Lisa Kudrow. I go out there and, and surf around and see what's out there and I've seen some really interesting websites on my clients and you know there's just no way to monitor it or to protect your client what's out there. Occasionally there's the you know naked picture that's been completely fabricated but there's really nothing you can do. There are no laws to protect anyone from doing that. Elizabeth uses the highly publicized chat areas such as Prodigy and AOL's Celebrity Circle to get her clients seen in a positive light. What matters with doing publicity on the internet is what do you have to promote. You are? Batgirl. That's not awfully PC. Usually it's to promote something very specific and that's the focus of it. Whatever happened, you know, in their personal life that was written about in the media is really just sort of inconsequential to what they're doing. However, for companies such as 9X, McDonald's, and Ford Motor Company, slanderous websites can have drastic effects. Spin doctor Don Middleberg of Middleberg Associates explains what problems these rogue websites can pose. They are impacting sales, they are hurting employee morale, they are damaging vendor relationships, they are damaging recruiting, they are damaging banking relationships. There isn't a part of a company's business that isn't impacted in some way by these sites. Unity Stokes, also of Middleburg, states that their firm does use traditional media just as celebrity publicists do. However, for corporations, he says... You need to respond instantly uh, to this negative information. So it involves creating a website immediately with links to accurate information to third party and other credible sources to back up your position and to essentially prove the rogue webmasters wrong. Ultimately, this new medium may actually end up being more positive than negative. And I think it's great for publicity because there's so many people that are tuned to the internet that, you know, might not be reading magazines or watching TV, and it's a way to reach those people. If you'd like more information about Spin Doctors on the Net, come to our website, CNET.com. Coming up, the latest news from the digital world and what you can do when your hard disk is full. Net News is sponsored by IBM Solutions for a Small Planet. In our news this week, Netscape, best known for its browser, has announced details and a delivery date for its new push technology. It's called Netcaster, and it'll be incorporated into Netscape's next version of its communicator browser package, due out next month. It will pipe Internet info directly to communicator users from more than 20 online publishers, among them ABC News, CNN-FN, Time Warner, and our own CNET.
Rumors continue to proliferate about a potential takeover of ailing Apple Computer by Oracle Chief Executive Larry Ellison. Ellison's lined up investment partners and is now reportedly hunting down new executives to manage Apple. He says the company could be a great supplier of network computers. Apple Chief Gil Emilio maintains the company is still not for sale. A precedent-setting internet case is playing out in German courts involving online provider CompuServe. The managing director of CompuServe Germany has been indicted for aiding in the distribution of child pornography. German prosecutors want to hold the man responsible for not censoring the internet's lewd offerings from the German public. CompuServe calls the accusations groundless. Back in the U.S., online provider the Microsoft Network is having troubles of its own trying to handle its email volume. MSN was forced to double its number of email servers last week to handle the volume. Subsequently, members' mail went undelivered for about three days. No mail was lost. Microsoft did have some heartening news last week. The company had an unexpected 80% jump in quarterly profits. Microsoft's latest acquisition, Web TV, is taking its first round of price cuts. Licensed Web TV manufacturers Sony and Philips are dropping the price tags by 15 to 25 percent since Web TV sales are falling way short of expectations. Store prices will go down from 300 bucks to about 250. Microsoft co-founder and industry mega investor Paul Allen now has his own personal website. The bearded multi-billionaire has shunned publicity until now. Allen's opened his private life to the cyber public, revealing his business strategy, hobbies, and favorite websites. You can even email him your own thoughts. Allen is an investor in 45 companies, including CNET. He's the country's third richest person. Remember, if you want to stay abreast of tech news as it happens, bookmark and visit news.com. It's updated many times daily with everything you need to know about the world of computers. Thanks, Richard. Now, we all know how rapidly things change in this digital world, so each week we answer your most frequently asked questions or facts. And here to cut through the jargon is our own Sophie Formica. Thank you very much, Gina. Well, if you own a computer, you know how valuable space on your hard drive is. That's the area of your computer that stalls all the files, and that space is always limited. That's the topic of this week's fact file question from Matthew Taylor. He writes, I'm running out of storage space on my hard drive. What can I do? Well, Matthew, there are several things you can do. For starters, copy the files that you don't use every day onto a floppy disk and then delete them from your hard drive. This will free up some of your storage space. And it's a good idea to have copies of all your files anyway, just in case your computer crashes. And it does happen. Another alternative is to buy an external hard drive, which is a small hard drive that connects to your computer on the outside rather than the inside. A zip drive is one of the most popular storage options. It's easy to use and costs about $150. Another more expensive option is to buy a larger internal hard drive to replace the old one. Or if you're using a really old machine, it just may be time to get a new computer. If you're confused about any of the terms or technologies that are featured here on CNET Central, we want to help. So send your question to the fact file at CNET.com or through regular or snail mail to the fact file, 150 Chestnut Street, San Francisco. Francisco, California 94111. And if you'd like to know more about what to do if you run out of hard drive space, head on over to CNET.com. You'll also find those fact file addresses and each week's question and answer. Stay with us just ahead. Help detectives solve mysteries using the World Wide Web. And a new CD-ROM takes us back to the wild, wild west. The Best of the Web is brought to you by MCI One. Life just got simpler. We have a mixed bag of sites to show you this week as we look at film, television, and outer space in our picks for the best of the web. Although you'll find the usual video clips, cast, and credit info, NBC's Homicide website, based on the popular TV show, contains more than just promotional items. This site also offers an original, interactive, and online narrative. Join detectives Johnson and Cutler as you try and solve some horrific homicides using Java-enhanced clues and real audio-based tips. That night, Linda was designated driver, so she just drank a little at the beginning. But if you'd rather investigate the science of outer space, then set your sights on the comet's tail. This site dishes out all the hard facts on these interplanetary ice balls. Learn exactly what comets are, what they're made of, and where they come from. Did a gigantic comet really wipe out the dinosaurs? With so much hype surrounding falling space debris, you might want to check this site out for the truth. And for a visit to the stars of the silver screen, we head over to the Film 100 website. Ranked in order from 1 to 100, check out the most influential people in the history of film. 
find out why W.K. Lori Dixon is ranked number one, Spielberg 82, and John Cassavetes number 100. Then email the website creators with your comments, suggestions, and gripes. For more Best of the Web, visit CNET.com. This week's feature also includes an e-zine for women and a site for teenage girls. Thank you very much. And Gina, I have in my hand a digital camera, an expensive one that cost about 8,000 simoleons, whereas Desmond Crisis is here from CNET Labs with an ordinary camcorder and the watchdog. Yeah, this doesn't quite cost 8,000 simoleons. Simoleons are harder to get than they used to be, but these are easy to find around the house, and now you can use this instead of a high-priced digital camera uh, to catch images for your web page. You might need that, or for some documents uh, that you want to build. Now there's some nice color printers. You can actually use this stuff. H hand me that camcorder. I'm going to plug it in here while I point out the web page here for uh, a company that has the newest innovation in this market. You might have heard of something called Snappy, which started about about a year ago, this concept of something that plugs into the parallel port on your PC and into a camcorder and gives you video image capture. I'm going to try to capture some images of Missy here. Well, this is the latest. This is called the Grab It. It comes from Ames Lab, and uh, this is another way of pulling video off of your parallel port. But it's up the ante a bit because this one actually can handle S video. It'll take regular composite video if that's what you have. And this is a way of capturing digital images out of your camera. So here we go. Here's Missy the Watchdog on duty, looking tough. We're taking pictures of her. Oh, she oh, is tough. So <laughs> okay. here are six images of her looking tough, and I can decide which one that I really want and hit the pause button to kind of hold it. Let's see. This one, she looks pretty tough. Unfortunately, oh, she does. <laughs> Action <laughs> mode. Oh, I wish we had audio on here. <laughs> anyway, what's important about this is the fact that you get updated frames about once every one and a half seconds mm -hmm. that make it much easier to select just the That's frame right. you if want. If you only had a single frame, video running at about 30 frames a second, it would be real tough to grab the one you want. <laughs> no, Easy there, killer. Don't let her size fool her. <laughs> fool you. This is a killer. She's got big teeth. All right. How much is this puppy? Well, it's, uh, well, the puppy's not for sale, but the board is about $130 street price, and it's a whole lot cheaper than a digital camera. Once again, it's called Grab It, and if you want more information, just go to CNET.com. Desmond, thanks once again. Thank you. Let's see if we can get this get ferocious look. <laughs> George Lucas' software company, LucasArts, is probably best known for their games based on the Star Wars universe. And yes, that's a universe from a galaxy far, far away. Well, they've shifted gears and they're going back in time to create a brand new game from the wild, wild west. It's a classic tale, the good, no! the bad, and the ugly duking it out in the old west. Well, now this genre is being put to the test on your PC in a new game called Outlaws. I love you. Anna! Your wife's just been murdered, your daughter kidnapped. As gunslinging Marshal James Anderson, you must find the outlaws who committed these awful crimes. And, uh, I really wanted to do something that captured that spirit of walking down a town, and walking down Main Street and looking for guys up in the windows and shooting them just like you saw in the old Clint Eastwood movies. Darren Stinnett, the creator of Outlaws, says his inspiration for making the game partly came from director Sergio Leone and actor Clint Eastwood's romanticized view of the Old West. It was more about superheroes that could take guys out at 200 yards with their pistol. You know, that kind of thing didn't really happen, but it was a romantic look at it. It was how people wanted to believe that the Old West was. To produce the look and feel of Leone's movies, Stinnett called upon his team of designers to hand draw each character on paper and then on the PC. Well, we wanted to express their character and, and some of their personality in the way we drew these characters. And with strong characters and a good storyline, Stinnett hopes gamers will experience something a little different than just the average shoot 'em up. They want something where they have to think a little bit more. Um, to feel like uh, they're actually using their, their, you know, their mind instead of just being fast with the joystick. You afraid of dying? Outlaws on your store shelves now, but for a free demo version for your PC, go to www.download.com. All you have to do is find the uh, quick search feature on the front page. Enter the word Outlaws and you're there. 
And if you'd like to learn more about this game, Outlaws, or any game, here's a good tip. Go to CNETsGameCenter.com. They have constantly updated tips, tactics, hacks, and how-tos, and I might add cheats for some of the best games. Of course, our site is www.CNET.com, and it's one of the most popular sites on the web. You can use it to stay on top of everything in the world of computers, from reviews of the latest products to uh, tips to help you make the most of the software you already own. And new this week is an article on how to get the most out of America Online. Great idea. That's it for CNET Central this week. Thanks for tuning in and logging on. Alert or